magic of Mexico, in the footsteps of the Toltecs and Carlos Castaneda. Episode 2, Teotihuacan, the place to become God. Teotihuacan, the place where one became God. An ancient city located 50 kilometers northeast of downtown Mexico City. This is one of the most ancient and largest in its heyday. The Indian city of pre-Columbian America which at one time was one of the six largest cities in the world. Teotihuacan became a regional center in the 2nd century CE. For inexplicable reasons, this densely populated city was completely abandoned by the population by the middle of the 7th century. The reasons are not known. Scientists and archaeologists do not give a clear answer. They cannot explain this fact. The Aztecs, who came to the site of Teotihuacan much later, found only majestic ruins. Wikipedia, Teotihuacan. So we arrived in Teotihuacan. Just before visiting the archaeological site of Teotihuacan, Grandfather Miguel asked us all to stand in a circle and According to shamanic traditions and ritual, turn to the forces of all four directions of the world, as well as to heaven and earth, in order to get permission to visit this land, and also to open the space. To open the four cardinal directions is to invoke energies, which is done at the opening of each ceremony, before a temascal, or before a very important event. Shipotetic represents the power of letting go of everything that has become obsolete so that we have the opportunity to be born again. The power of the North, Tezcatlipoca, guides the inner eye in the study of oneself. We will ask permission from Tezcatlipoca to enter the pyramids and obtain the knowledge that will help us in the study of ourselves. From the high ground near Atumba, Hernan Cortez could not fail to notice the strangely shaped hills that rose some two kilometers south of him. And although there is no mention of this in any of the chronicles of that time, Cortez probably rode between these hills and mounds, not even suspecting what the earth was hiding under the hooves of his horse. The Aztecs themselves, of course, knew this very well, but of course, they were silent. This area of artificial hills they called the Aztec word Teotihuacan, that is, the place where one became god. By the time the Aztecs arrived, Teotihuacan had long been in ruins. Its ruins are overgrown with grass, mosses, and shrubs. The Aztecs themselves were mistaken, believing that Teotihuacan once served as the burial place of their own ancient gods, mysterious giant creatures. However, Teotihuacan was in fact something very different from the necropolis. At least, no traces of the burials of the gods have yet been found in it. 
One thing is very clear. The Aztecs found this ancient capital already lying in ruins. The Day the Gods Came, 2003, Eric von Däniken. The most grandiose ancient structure of Central America is the famous Pyramid of the Sun. The dimensions of its base are 222 by 225 meters. Although the Pyramid of the Sun is 19 meters higher than the Pyramid of the Moon, the viewer, looking from the top of the Pyramid of the Moon across the whole of Teotihuacan to the Pyramid of the Sun, has the impression that both pyramids have the same height. This effect is due to the height difference on the avenue. The Pyramid of the Sun, in terms of base area, surpasses the most famous pyramid in ancient Egypt, the Pyramid of Cheops in Giza, in the vicinity of Cairo, Egypt. The weight of the material that fills its volume, this is unfired brick, is estimated at about 1 million tons. The inner core of the pyramid is made of hound, stone, and brick. Its side pediments are covered with a special mortar which in ancient times were covered with a layer of lime plaster. The Day the Gods Came, 2003, Eric von Däniken. Now that the winter solstice has passed, the sun was almost level with the pyramid on this side. At the spring equinox, the sun will be on this side. Because it happens when the year begins according to the sun's calendar. And these protrusions on the pyramid mean a different position of the sun during the year. Also, this place was used for rituals. People gathered here under the pyramid. Ordinary people could not climb either the pyramid or the altar. Only clergy and statesmen had this right. Priests and leaders ascended this part of the pyramid, not only to conduct rituals, but also to convey important news to the population. Важные новости, важные события своему населению. 
On the very top of the pyramid, they climbed only in exceptional cases for ceremonies. This right was given to clergymen, statesmen, and in exceptional cases, warrior heroes who showed heroism in any battles and deserved this right. Several years ago, exactly under the center of the so-called Pyramid of the Sun, deep in a bed left by an ancient lava flow, a cave was discovered. In the same way, a cave and a relict lake are located under the Pyramid of Kukulkan in Chichen Itza. The very fact of its existence is recognized with reservations, and it is customary to remain silent about the rest. However, the very presence of a certain cavity exactly under the center of the pyramid of the sun indicates how ancient and accurate the ancient plan was. Moreover, he speaks of the non-randomness of the very choice of location. The day the cots came, 2003, Eric von Deniken. There is a door that leads to an underground entrance. In the center of the pyramid, there is a central axis which rests on underground caves. These are four caves located in four parts of the world in the shape of a four-leaf clover flower. This pyramid is built right on top of these caves. These caves are energetically strong place, and when you actually climb to the top of the pyramid, you feel it. Thirty years ago, it was allowed to climb the pyramids and hold ceremonies there, similar to the one we held today at the entrance. Grandfather Miguel then brought his son. My son was then two years old. During the ceremony, the son got scared and hid behind his leg. Grandfather Miguel asked his son, What happened? Look, Dad, I see a bird in the center of the pyramid. The son said that the bird sits on the ground right in the center of the pyramid. And how do you see her? What is she like? Multicolored. The sun saw Quetzalcoatl. Every first Sunday in September, ceremonies are held in the square in front of the Pyramid of the Sun. When 300-400 dancers dance here, they start spinning the energy. Eventually, this energy explodes into the sky like lightning. You may not see her, but you can feel her rising up. Today, at the top of the Pyramid of the Sun, there is no temple that crowned it in antiquity. And on the Pyramid of the Moon, there is no massive, weighing more than 22 tons, stone statue, which was discovered during excavations at the foot of the pyramid. Initially, on top of the Pyramid of the Sun, there was a statue of a certain god. It existed during the time of the Spanish invasion, but the Franciscan Juan de Zogamara, 1478-1548, the first bishop of Mexico, ordered it to be broken and the silver and gold to be melted down. Therefore, we do not know which statue of which god crowned the top of the pyramid. The day the gods came, 2003, Eric von Deniken. Presumably, this statue could be the god Tlaloc, 
or a warrior who was doing a recapitulation, better known as Chakmul, in a characteristic pose with his head bowed. The representative of the merchants says that he once managed to enter the pyramid, and he saw these caves. They are just empty, there is nothing there. Let's go to the pyramid of the moon now. Despite its grandiose size by ancient standards, Teotihuacan impresses with its clarity and thoughtful planning, and its perfect infrastructure is a real miracle of ancient architects. From north to south, the main avenue stretches for a good three kilometers, the width of which exceeds 40 meters. Today, it is called Camina del Murtos, the road of the dead. On both sides, it is framed by once luxurious buildings, small pyramids and temples. On the north side, the avenue ends with a mountain ledge at least 30 meters high so that an observer who looks along the avenue from south to north has the complete impression that the majestic avenue goes straight into the sky. This complex looks exactly the same today, and a person standing at the far lower end of the avenue sees in front of him an endless staircase with countless steps, smoothly turning into the pyramid of the moon. On the south side of this pyramid-shaped building, five terraces were made, in the center of which, there is a wide staircase that allows you to climb to the top of the Pyramid of the Moon. The Day the Gods Came, 2003, Eric von Däniken. There is an assumption that this area was more important than the area around the Pyramid of the Sun. There is a possibility that this Pyramid of the Moon was used for ceremonies of Tezcatlipoca, since this pyramid is in the direction to the north. There in the north lives Tezcatlipoca, which is the smoking obsidian mirror. This Katlipoka symbolizes our inner work with ourselves, and it also gives us the opportunity to work with our energy bodies, the dream body, so that we can travel in it while leaving our physical body. Our physical body is just our shell. What is eternal is our energy body. Therefore, this pyramid was considered very important, because the pyramid is associated with Tiscatlipoca. Thanks to this connection, it became possible to make good progress in the sciences, construction, architecture and mathematics without having current technologies. It is highly likely that during the heyday of Teotihuacan, the inhabitants went on astral travel. Relatively speaking, they could fly to the moon and any other planet thanks to constant practice and training of their dream body.
The terms Tonal and Nagual were used by Don Juan Matas and are described in the books of Carlos Castaneda. These terms mean two parallel worlds that make up the universe. The world of material objects, Tanal, and the non-material world, Nagual. The Tanal is the organizer of the world, he continued. Perhaps the best way to describe his monumental work is to say that the task of bringing the chaos of the world into order rests on his shoulders. But it would be excessive to claim, as sorcerers do, that everything we know as human beings is the work of the Tanal. The innate quality of the Tanal is to be conservative and jealous of one's actions. The Tanal in all of us has been turned into a petty and despotic guardian when he should be a broad-minded guardian. The Tonal is all we know. The Nagual is there, he said. There, beyond the surrounding island of the Tonal. The Nagual is where the power resides. We feel that there is another side of us, but when we try to define this side, the Tonal seizes the control, and as a director, he is extremely petty and jealous. He blinds our eyes with his cunning and makes us forget the slightest hint of the other part of the true couple. The Nagual. The Nagual can do extraordinary things, he said, things that might seem impossible, things that are unthinkable for the Tanal. But the unusual thing is that the performer himself cannot know how these things happen. The Tanal begins with birth and ends with death. The Nagual never ends. The Nagual has no limit. Tales of Power, 1974, Carlos Castaneda. The symbol of the Tonal and Teotihuacan is the Pyramid of the Sun, and the Nagual is the Pyramid of the Moon. Despite the fact that this pyramid of the moon is lower and smaller than the pyramid of the sun, you should feel that this zone is more energetically strong. Is there a cave here? Yes, but how do you know that? Are these caves connected to another pyramid? No, they are not connected. Here under this altar, and there under another altar, they found a cave that leads under the Pyramid of the Moon. Now there will be a ritual. The symbol of the Tonal in Teotihuacan is the Pyramid of the Sun, and the Nagual is the Pyramid of the Moon. el fuego porque están las chicoas las serpientes del fuego él es el agua porque él se manifiesta como tlaloc 